Trends and foods come and go. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein, I know that well. Join me today as I bring back some classics, recipes that are worthy of a revival, today on SoFlo Taste. This is South Florida. It's where I live and work. I'm Chef Michelle Bernstein. South Florida is more than sun, sand, and sea. It's a lifestyle of fashion, sound, culture, and of course, food. Food with taste from all over the world. Join me as we celebrate the food of South Florida and the people who love it. Join me as we experience SoFlo Taste. Welcome, Taste Buds. Recently, I found an article that listed some favorite foods of days gone by. Not sure why these foods lost flavor or favor, but I thought it would be fun to bring some of them back for a culinary curtain call. So let's get cooking. The first one is French onion soup. How can you not love that gooey cheese on the outside and eating that sweet, delicious oniony soup? Okay, so I got started with cooking the onions already because that's really what takes the longest and the hardest part about making this soup is the patience that you have to have to caramelize onions. So these onions have taken me so far about 25 to 30 minutes. I just wanted to show you really quickly how thinly I cut the onions. This would be considered a julienne. And there's two ways you can get about this. This is just a half an onion cleaned up a little bit. You can either just cut it straight down like so, or you can cut it straight down the other way. So all this is is onion that's been cooking in a little bit of olive oil and butter combined. Once the onions get really nice and soft and translucent, I add just a pinch of sugar to help the caramelization process move along a little bit. And that makes them really nice and sweet. All right, so when you get to this gorgeous golden color, we're gonna add a little bit of flavor from a couple bay leaves and some thyme. And if you don't have butcher twine, which this is butcher twine, I usually steal any string that my son has around to tie this together. I've even used a new shoelace when I got desperate once to do this. So you basically just, in no perfect way, tie this all together. Because we don't really want a huge amount of this flavor, we just want to infuse it and then we're going to remove it. A lot of the thyme leaves will, of course, end up in the onion, which is a good thing. So add that right in there and then I'm gonna salt it now just a little bit so that the flavor gives a little pop. The next thing we're gonna do is add a little bit of white wine. Not all this, no. It's only gonna get about a cup and a half. Make sure that white wine is a little bit on the dry side. And I'm gonna go ahead and let this just reduce by about a third of the way. And then I'm gonna add beef broth. So you can buy low or no sodium beef broth. I highly recommend you buy it because it takes a long time to make beef broth. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this reduce. I'll add my broth, come right back. We have a lot to do today. Beautiful classic dishes. I can't wait to share them with you. SoFlo Taste will return right after this. Welcome back to Soflo Taste and of course our show with the classic recipes. We're here at JA World where volunteers are always welcome. JA programs would not exist without the support of volunteers. If you'd like to help our children, please contact Junior Achievement of South Florida at jasouthflorida.org. So it's amazing how quickly French onion soup gets done. I, I just tasted it and I can't get over the fact that it's basically ready and we just went to a commercial break. So our flavor is already there. I'm happy. There's not much I need to do. I salted it a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. And to me, it's done. Um, the only thing that I added into this right at the end when I made it the first time was a little bit of sherry. This one is Oloroso. It's a 15 year. It's a beautiful sherry that my husband doesn't know I stole from our house but it's really good. Finishing it off with that is delicious. All right, so other than that, you have to have your, of course, required bread. So this is just a baguette that we sliced up. See how thick it is? And we put it into a low oven, about 250 degrees. This took about 20 minutes because they're really crisp and dry. It's not about the color, it's about how dry they are. So I'm gonna put just two of them. I hate when there's too much bread in my French onion soup and you pour in your very oniony and delicious French onion soup. 
And as far as the cheese, um, you could go a couple different ways with it. You can either get Gruyere or you can get Fontina. Uh, Fontina is a really great melting cheese. Gruyere me melts really well, but it also has a little bit of a stronger um, smell to it and, and flavor. Not in a bad way, a, a good smell. And then instead of grating it, I just slice them into actual slices, which you can ask a deli or your deli counter to do for you if you don't want to do it yourself. You know, I want that ooze on the side of cheese because that's my favorite part of French onion soup is to eat the sides of the bowl. All right, so I'm going with a lot. I, I think it gets a lot. So if you have a soup bowl with a very large, what we call the mouth, which is the opening, this wouldn't work. You would have to get a soup bowl that has a bit, like a crock kind of thing, uh, a bit of a smaller mouth on it. So I'm gonna try this in a very high oven. I have the oven set at about 425, and it should be really quick. So as I do my next recipe, maybe y'all can tell me when it's melted. I put that on a little cookie sheet, but I have foil set inside so I don't make a mess. So my next recipe, steak tartare or beef tartare. Delicious, classic. There's been a lot of riffs on it. I sometimes do it with a little Korean flavor. Filet mignon is usually the best cut of meat to use for steak tartare. However, I've tried with a lot of different cuts. And if you have a really solid recipe and you use good ingredients, you can't really go wrong. We got this beautiful filet from Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. If you want to visit them online, they're at DelawareChicken.com. Their ingredients are wonderful. And so we got this filet mignon from them. Thank you guys. And it's gorgeous. If you have a little bit of extra fat on the side, you can easily cut that out. I'm gonna go ahead and use a nice slicer for this. It's up to you whatever knife you feel comfortable with. I'll take this one so you can see how I do this. So I don't wanna lose anything. So I am gonna just cut out a little bit of the fat. And just so you know, we threw this into a, a, a freezer for just a few minutes so that it's really nice and cold. And it's actually easier to slice perfect little dice pieces when something is really, really cold like this. Um, and I really want to take out this piece of fat, but I'm going to cut a little bit around it so that I don't lose any of the meat. But I don't want extra pieces of fat in my tartare. So I'll put that on the side. I'll cut around this one, put that on the side. So for a nice clean piece, you're just going to go ahead and slice it into nice slices, like so. I would say that this is about a quarter of an inch thick. And then I'm going to take a few of those and stack them up and cut really nice and thin slices. Now that everything is sliced up really nicely, let's go ahead and cut them into little pieces because as you see, all the ingredients are cut up really nice and small. So little squares is what we're looking for here. And I know it won't be so perfect and it doesn't matter. You just want to make sure they're really nice and small. You just don't want to go crazy with your knife, you know? It's really nice to have the little pieces in your mouth rather than everything so tiny and shredded up. All right, so let's go ahead and put this in a bowl. As you see, I have a bowl over a bowl of ice. Let's see how our onion soup is looking. So at home, you probably have a broiler setting. And by the way, your toaster oven does too if you have a big toaster oven. This would be so much nicer under a broiler so that you can get that good caramelization. I only have a hot oven, which I'm okay with this. As you see, we have beautiful melting cheese all around it over on top. A broiler obviously would make this caramelized, but just don't walk away from it. Okay. So I have this gorgeous steak tartare in here. Let's go ahead and add the ingredients and I have some toast points ready. So let's start out with, to me, the probably most important ingredients. We've got some shallot. Cornichon, I didn't really talk about this too much. Little tiny pickles. They're not dill. The cornichon is kind of just a regular pickle made with a little bit of um, peppercorn and bay leaf. It's lovely. It has a great crispiness to it, but not a huge amount of flavor. I have chopped up capers. Now there's capers in salt and capers in brine. 
Be very careful with capers and salt because they're really salty and capers are already pretty salty. All right, I have some very finely chopped Italian parsley. And then finally, the wet stuff. A little bit of Dijon mustard. Don't go too crazy with the Dijon, it'll take over, okay? Lemon, I think I'm gonna add about a quarter to a half of a lemon. An egg yolk, which by the way, you can place on the top afterwards. Some people like to break into it, but I like to go ahead and mix everything together. I think it's a lot tastier that way. A little bit of freshly ground black pepper, a little shot of Worcestershire, a little dash of Tabasco, and then finally, some cognac. Uh, brandy would work fine as well. And if you don't have either one of those, sherry, like we talked about earlier with a French onion soup, or even a little bit of really dry white wine would work. Mix all this together. Let's not forget some salt. Always taste it before you serve it. Make sure that you have a good balance of all the great flavors. What should it taste like? Delicious. Doesn't really matter that it's, you know, not exactly the way some people expect it to be. If it tastes good, and this does, it's ready to go and it's so cold and fresh. Oh, it's delicious. So some people make it fancy by molding it. I actually just like it preformed like so and you are basically ready to scoop it on a cracker and head out. We've got our beautiful steak tartare, our French onion soup. What could be better? Maybe a little dessert. Come right back. I have a couple surprises for you coming up. You're watching SoFlo Taste, the number one food show in all of South Florida. Welcome back to SoFlo Taste. Let me give you a little hint to who my guest is. He shoots, he scores. <gasps> this is Doug Plagans from the Florida Panthers. I am so happy you're here. This is the actual, Thanks you're the voice, me. right, of the Panthers? Radio voice of the Panthers. It's uh, so fifth nice. Fifth season with the team. Fifth so season. So it's been every bit the dream come true I hoped it would be. Is it? Yeah. This Are was, you, did you always love hockey? I always loved hockey. Grew up in Michigan, so, you know, when you stand on two feet, they throw skates on you. It's kind of oh, how so it goes. Oh, so it's like Minnesota. Very much. Because that's where my dad's in that, from. In that regard, yes. And uh, hockey was the first sport that I really gravitated toward. Uh -huh. And Did you play? Uh, I, I played growing up, played through high school. Uh, eventually, being an NHL broadcaster was my, you know, that was my goal. I, that was the goal of mine probably since I was in about second grade. Thankful for the, for the opportunity every day that I've been given from the Panthers. So I'm sorry for my ignorance. I don't know a lot about hockey, but how are we doing? We've got a really exciting team. Uh, we have uh, you know one of the one of the best coaches of all time in Joel Quenville, and and had uh, you know made some huge splashes during the off season and added to what's already a very talented young core of players. So, oh, that's awesome. So we have a team that not only is is built to be very exciting to compete right now, but it's going to be a, a factor for many seasons to wonderful, come. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to hear. So it's exciting that you're here at JA World with me because the Florida Panthers actually have an area here, right? That it's a very impressive facility. And yes, it's amazing it's, it's here, really isn't cool it? to be involved here at Junior yeah. Achievement in South Florida. And so what do the Florida Panthers do here for the kids? Well, there's a there's a storefront here and it's it's part of the program and, and Junior Achievement South Florida is one of our community champions, which mm -hmm. is a, a, a great program and uh, our, our ownership, Vinny Viola, Doug Sifu, their their families, they've uh, committed a lot of money throughout the community. They've always and been extremely it's, generous. It's, it, very much so yeah. and it's it's really impressive to see what's been done here. And and you know we're really excited just to, to be a part of what uh, of what's going on here. But the kids come here and they they learn great life lessons and sure. see how business works and how the world works. But what do the Panthers do here? Do they actually like sell? All we, of there's the, a there's a store. The Panthers have the a, a storefront right. in there, and and kids can get uh, you know they can purchase Panthers uh, items there. That's and, wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a really cool thing. Have you ever had Cherry's Jubilee? 
I have not had Cherry's Jubilee, I don't believe, but okay. you know, Cherry's Jubilee sounds awesome. I'm a the big cherries dessert excited guy. Cherry's so. you because of Michigan, right? Yeah, all cherries grow. are a Michigan delicacy. I'm from Michigan originally, and okay. uh, and cherries are a big thing up in uh, up in Michigan, specifically Traverse City, very nice area up on Lake Michigan, and oh, uh, and yeah, a lot of cherry. They have the cherry festival up there and very stuff like cool. that. So. So I'm very excited to see what we're going to whip up right here. So it's an old classic recipe. Okay. It's one that normally, I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant or have heard of them that come with a cart. Sometimes they have that on cruise ships. They come with a little cart and they actually cook next to your table. Oh, I've, I'm familiar with the concept, yep. Okay. Seen so it around. this is the type of dessert that they would make table side. Okay. Yeah. And um, if you are unlucky as I was in culinary school, you might light the drapes on fire in your cooking school dining room when you make Cherry's Jubilee. Um, we don't have any drapes and I have decided, Yeah, I've decided this is my first time making it again since culinary school. And luckily, the only person to set on fire would be you and I, and I'm not going to do that. So today. this is kind of facing a fear for you it's right kind of now. It's freaking me out will. a little bit. Well, yeah. we're going to be we're we're going to be okay. I'm happy you're next to me. We're going to be okay. So I'm melting a little butter. Okay. I'm going to add some brown sugar to it, and we're basically going to wait for this brown sugar to kind of dissolve and for it to melt a little bit and look like it's become almost part of the butter, if you will. And what I love about this is that it's fast, it's easy. And you can make this recipe with pretty much anything, including bananas, like a bananas foster. Have yes, you heard of that? Yes. Same concept. Table side, old classic recipe. Everybody used to love just cooking in sugar and butter and then lighting it with something impressive and pouring it over ice cream. It's actually very simple. So I always wondered how they got it to look like this. Well, there and you go. here we're, we're doing it. This so is we're great. there. Okay, so now I'm gonna add the cherries. Key part of Cherry's Jubilee. Absolutely. So then, the other thing I have with me is a little bit of bourbon. So normally I would always tell people to flambe or light the bourbon on the side, never over the burner. So basically I'm gonna shut it off for a second to show everybody what I mean by that. Pour it in. So there's a reason Back you up. turned that off before we added that component. Oh, okay. See? See how you could possibly light a drape with that kind of thing? Yes. So be very careful at home, y'all, when you do that. Wow. Um, but it burns off really quickly. It's not yet, but it will. And then everything will basically just melt together. So now the last part of this is to balance out the sweetness. I add a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. We don't have to turn the turn the burner off for this nope, one? Okay. because there's no alcohol in lemon juice. Gotcha. So Makes we don't sense. have to worry about that. Uh, what I do add though is a little pinch of salt to balance a little bit of the sweetness. This is going to reduce a little bit. And would you serve us? I, I could certainly do that. Can you and do that? All right. I, so and let's. Ice cream's the, involved, which is always really a good exciting, thing, yeah. right? Okay. I'm going to have you hold a towel. Okay. I'm going to make sure that all of that sugar and everything has melted in there. And then you're going to use a spoon okay. and spoon off as much cherry and as much sauce. And then we add it to the ice cream here. And pour it over and the ice cream. So there's I'm your put winning combination. In. Well, there, there you go. I need you on the show more. It's almost like you're announcing my play-by-play. -play. I like this. So I don't like to cook this for too long because I like my cherries to still have a little crunch to them. So you see all these big bubbles that yes. are happening right here? Big bubbles means that we have a perfect syrup texture. Okay. Yeah, it's time to serve. So I'm gonna put this here. All right. And you can serve us our cherries jubilee. I'm excited. And so, then and then we can yes. eat the cherries. And then jubilee, we can definitely eat the cherries. Which is the part we're all looking forward to. I've been hungry this whole show because I've been making all of my favorite foods. I love classic recipes. So Doug, after you put the cherries on, the sauce is just as important. So okay. I would kind of lean your saucepan in that direction okay. and scoop some of that sauce. Like so. Like so. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us about the Florida Panthers before we dig in and get out of here? The Florida Panthers, first of all, we have a, an incredibly exciting hockey team. Uh, the Panthers support youth hockey, they support uh, children's health and education, uh, support our, our veterans, and the endangered Florida Panther itself, which yeah. is, you know, the, the namesake of, of is, the franchise. So. Well, we're happy to have you, and 
we're humbled well, that you came. So thank, thank you, you very much for having us. And a toast to our Cherries Jubilee. Perfect. To All the right. Panthers, Cherries Jubilee, Junior Achievement South Florida. This is <laughs> this is awesome. I can't wait to dig into the Cherries Jubilee. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Come right back, everybody. I hope you remember these classic recipes. If you have a taste for them, I hope you'll give them a try. Who knows, we may be on our way to bringing them back. Thanks to the radio voice of our Florida Panthers, Doug Plagans. All of us at Soflo Taste wish him and our Panthers all the best in the coming year and their run to the playoffs. <laughs> Next week, I'm paying tribute to that incredibly versatile staple of our daily menus, the egg. But it will have an international taste with French, Mexican, and Middle Eastern flavors flavoring those eggs. So join me for some egg-excellent taste. Now let's check in with design expert Martin Amado. Good morning, Martin. Hi, Michelle. Coming up on Sofa Home Project, we take a plain dining room and turn it into an elegant space inspired by the fall. So taste buds, have a good week, and I'll see you next time here on Sofa Taste. Goodbye, Mwah. and good taste. Go Panthers! Woo! <laughs>